Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving an exponential equation. We have x to the power x to the power x equals 2 to the power negative square root of 2. And we're going to be solving for x values. So we're going to take the number on the right hand side and manipulate it until we can make it look like the left hand side. So in other words, we want to have an equality that looks like the following x to the power x to the power x equals a to the power a to the power a. If we can achieve that, then we can safely say that x equals a is a solution. This doesn't mean we found all the solutions, we still have to talk about that, but let's go ahead and find a solution at least. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to start off with 2 to the power negative square root of 2 and work with this. First of all, notice that we have a negative exponent. And what is the rule for negative exponents? If you have something like a to the power negative x, you can basically write it as 1 over a to the power x. And 1 over a to the power x can be written in different ways. We can put the x outside the parentheses, or we can put it as an exponent for a, like this. Because 1 to the power x is always 1, uh, this method works. Now, I want to go with the first one, or actually the second one, not the first one. I'm, uh, this is the first one, and this is the second one. So I'm going to write 2 to the power negative root 2 as 1 half to the power root 2. Now here's a good question. Is this an irrational number? The base is rational, the exponent is irrational, and yes, this should be an irrational number. Anyways, that's another th uh, topic to talk about. Now, I still haven't gotten to a to the a to the a, so kind of like trying to build a tower, right, with three numbers, but I only got two numbers so far. Well, so let's go ahead and do the following. Square root of 2 can be written as 2 to the power 1 half. Now, how is that possible, you might be asking, right? Well, any number to the power 1 half is basically the square root of that number, because if you think about it, if I multiply x to the power 1 half by x to the power 1 half, I get x. If x is positive, this just means that the square root of x times the square root of x equals x. Same thing, right? Okay, so that's how you work with rational exponents. So having said that, now we're going to do a little bit more on this one. First of all, notice that we got a 2 in the exponent, so that's nice. Now this is the critical part, so let me rewrite this here. I got 1 half to the power 2 to the power 1 half. Now I'm going to manipulate this to a little bit, or 2 to the power 1 half. Notice that 1 half is actually equal to 1 minus 1 half. So 2 to the power 1 half is the same as 2 to the power 1 times 2 to the power negative 1 half. Because when you multiply powers, we add the exponents. That makes sense? Hopefully it does. So here's what we're going to do. Instead of the 2 to the power 1 half, we're going to write 2 to the power 1 times 2 to the power negative 1 half. And the reasoning behind this is to get an extra number in the exponent. And you'll see in a little bit how this works. So first thing I'm going to do is put this number inside the parentheses and then hold on to this number and you write it as the reciprocal of something, which is going to bring us an extra power. Make sense? Hopefully it does. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to write this as 1 half to the power 2 to the power 2 to the power negative 1 half. So by taking an extra 2 inside, I was able to make the exponent of the exponent negative. This is what I'm talking about. Okay? I hope that makes sense. Now this is equivalent to 1 over 4, because that's what 1 half squared is, to the power 2 to the power negative 1 one half. So far so good, hopefully. Now take a look at this. 2 to the power negative 1 half can be written as, let me write it here, 2 to the power negative 1 half can be written as 1 over 2 to the power 1 half, right? So let's go ahead and do that. 1 over 4 to the power 1 half to the power 1 half. Now, how was, I able to write, how was I able to write it? Basically, what this means is the same as this, so we can write it as 
one half to the power one half. Because remember the rule, a to the power negative x is one over a to the x or one over a to the power x, so I use the second one again. So the second one is more helpful because I basically want to build a tower and this is going to help me, okay? Now, notice that I can now do a little bit of more work to make all of these numbers equal. Remember, our goal was to get to something like this, a to the a to the a, and looks like we almost got there. The only thing, the only problem is I got different numbers. I have one fourth, one half, and one half. I can also put that in parentheses if you want, even if it's not necessary. Make sense? So can we manipulate this a little bit more to get a to the power a to the power a? Think about it. If needed, pause the video and try to answer that question before you proceed any further. Anyways, so here's what I'm going to do. Yes, I can do it. This is doable because 1 half to the power 1 half can be written as 1 half to the power 2 times 1 fourth. So 1 half can be written as 2 times 1 fourth. Why am I doing it? Because I want to put this 2 inside like I did before. So write this as 1 half squared to the power 1 fourth. But 1 half squared is 1 fourth, so this is going to be 1 fourth to the power 1 fourth. And that's kind of like an interesting relationship, right? You have a number, and you raise it to the same number, and then you cut that number in half and raise it to the new number, and you still get the same answer. So it's kind of like this, like x to the power x equals x over 2 to the power x over 2. And this works when x is equal to 1 half. Is there another answer to this? Probably not, right? Uh, this is also similar to the fact that 2 to the 4th power is the same as 4 to the 2nd power. If you raise both sides to the 8th power, you're going to realize what I'm talking about. Anyways, so this is an interesting relationship, and we're going to use that. So what am I going to do? I'm going to replace 1 half to the power 1 half with 1 fourth to the power 1 fourth, and that'll do the trick. So now what I have so far is 1 fourth, remember from here, 1 fourth to the power 1 half to the power 1 half, right? And then this part I'm going to write as 1 fourth to the power 1 fourth because the rules or manipulations allow me to do it. And guess what? We arrived at the answer. Now, what did we start with? We started off with x to the power x to the power x, and we ended up with 1 fourth to the power 1 fourth to the power 1 fourth. And guess what this means? x equals 1 fourth is a solution. Is that the only solution? Is there another solution? The answer is no. Why? Because f of x equals x to the power x to the power x is always increasing. You can find out by graphing it or looking at the derivative. Obviously, taking the derivative is not that easy. But if you think about the graph of x to the power x, this is not always increasing because it has a graph like this, right? So for certain values, the graph could be decreasing. That's why you may have more than one solution. But this is different. It is x to the power x to the power x. And here's the graph. Let's finish up with that. So as you can see here, x to the power x to the power x is very curvy and an interesting graph. And it is always increasing, therefore, it'll intersect this horizontal line at a single point, which is going to happen at x equals 1 fourth. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.